Broadcasting from the business capital of the world, this is the Podcast Business News Network. And welcome back to the show. We are so excited to have our amazing woman of the year. Yes, she is. Dr. Bonnie Ring joining us here today for another amazing show to talk more about the work she does as woman of the year, uh, as a licensed uh, psychologist, I should say, author, uh, Episcopal priest, reverend. She has a lot of titles to her name and she has been working hard for many years and continues to do so uh currently living in half moon may uh half moon bay california uh, she helps so many dr bonnie ring.com is the website welcome to the show how are you i'm good i'm good thank you oh, pleasure to have you please introduce yourself to everyone to start um you're like wow <laughs> Yeah, I, look, we're talking relationships today. This is a good one, but there's a lot. Yeah, I mean, there's so much to this amazing woman. I did a brief introduction. That, that could be okay if you like, unless you yeah. want to go in more depth. Yeah. Um, I, I've been practicing as a psychologist for almost 50 years. So there isn't anything anybody's experienced that I haven't heard about. And today I'd like to talk about the kinds of pro problems that couples face because oh. Most of us don't know how to maintain a relationship. It's not something we get educated about or licensed for, and yet we engage in it quite willingly uh, and often disastrously. But that's what I'd like to talk about today. Mm -hmm. Beautiful. Let's begin. Relationships here all the time. Well, you know, there are so many books that are self-help books Um that you'd think that when couples get into problems, that's where they would go if they didn't go to a therapist. But the truth is that the most couples come to a therapist when it's almost too late because it's gone on and on and on and on in an unresolved way and to the dissatisfaction of both parties. So one of the things I recommend is that you buy a little book like this one. It's an old book. It's called Creating a Good Relationship. And it's by uh, Robert Letterer, William Letterer, sorry, Bill Letterer. And it has a it has a questionnaire in it that allows you to assess your relationship and the areas where there are difficulties. So that's number one. That's a very positive thing you can do. Another positive thing you can do is to establish an agreement that you'll have an intimate time every day for like 15 minutes. And during that time, you will each talk about the most important thing that happened to you that day so that you get to know each other and get to share and listen to each other in an attentive way. But I'd like to talk about the problems. The problems uh, um, are, are pretty horrific. Um, what, the biggest one really is in communication. Um, being able to tell your partner what you need and what you want is something that's very threatening to people. Yeah. And they're scared to do that. Um, they're afraid they'll be rejected. But the truth is, if you don't ask, you won't get. Mm -hmm. And that's huge. Uh, the number of people that come to me for counseling as couples that feel like they're not cared for, that they're not appreciated, and that they're not understood, and that they're not listened to. Yeah. So one of the things I teach people to do is to um, listen to each other and say what they hear in their own words so that the other person actually feels heard. Because one of the stupid things we do is when we when I, we have a partner that goes on and on and on and on, we stop listening. And then they feel not cared for. And then it gets worse and it gets worse and it gets worse. And you end up having a stalemate. Yeah. <laughs> Excuse me. So I teach couples to really take the time before they answer to say what they heard. Yeah. That way the other person feels heard. They have been heard. It's real. Mm -hmm. And the relationship can then proceed on talking about the things that matter. Uh, another thing that doesn't happen is that... Um, there isn't a clarity about the commitments within the relationship. So for instance, um, 
do you allow each other time to do the things you love that you do individually? Yeah. Well, many couples either do one or the other. They either don't do that and they feel deprived or they do do that to excess and they feel estranged and alone. Mm -hmm. So coming to some conclusions together about the things you'll do together and the things you'll do separately and why that's important is very, very significant. Um, the other the other real issue I think today, not just between men and women, but between the same sex relationships as well, is who does what at home? It often gets unequal. And when it's unequal, then one person is going to feel like they're getting away with murder and the other is going to feel had. So it's really important to sit down and talk about the kinds of things that need doing at the house yeah. or apartment. And who's going to do what? And does it feel equal? If there are children involved, then there's even more complexity to finding time for both of you to have time with the children. Mm hmm those are some of the things that I immediately talk about. I, I let Jill ask me questions if she wants to, um, or I can babble on. We're not babbling. You're informative and you got me thinking about relationships too. Like I hope we all are and everything that I've gone through, go through questions, problems. But before we get to me, no, can continue more. I want to help more people besides myself. Come on. You know, the truth is that I don't think most of us realize how unprepared we are to maintain a relationship in a healthy way that we, we we have examples of our siblings or our relationship with our parents or the way we were treated at school and often those are negative mm -hmm. critical or they're bullying uh, and we don't know how to really say um, you are important to me and I want to know you. I really want to know you. Now, I don't think your partner should be your therapist. I'll be the first to say that. Yeah. I think they need to know what's ma what matters to you and what's upsetting you. But if they get in the role of your fixer, you're going to lose your autonomy. And it's going to get an improper balance of power. So I say, have that intimate time each day get to know what's happened for each other in that day that's been really important yeah and talk about it just you know make remarks about what you're learning about the other uh what you understand that you didn't understand before yeah um the other thing that i think couples really have trouble with is dealing with conflict Mm -hmm. No, I, I got into a conversation Sunday morning about this service that we were going to have, the worship service. And the other mm -hmm. person was so anxious. She made me anxious. And then I started to raise my voice. Mm -hmm. I started to express my anxiety. And then she she reacted with more anxiety on her part. And, you know, we didn't have the time to fix it. But I did take the time to say, I'm sorry I upset you. Yeah. You know, that's the most important thing you can say if you've done. It. And I want to have more conversation about this so that we won't get in this trap again. Um, other people's anxiety works and permeates our membranes and makes us anxious as well. So you could be you can be coming home from a day of work and feeling terrific. But if that initial reaction is not positive, then you don't know, you you withdraw. You tend to become a hermit. Mm -hmm. you to, or you get angry and, and you get upset. And then they have to deal with your upset instead of just with you. Yeah. So it's really important when you see conflict happening to say, let's stop a second. Let's see how we got into this. Mm -hmm. let's, let's see what we could do differently that would help. Um, let's let's um, let's start by apologizing. We got off to a bad start. 
I want I want to be able to say what I need to say, and I want to tell you about both my joys and my sorrows. Will you do that with me and invite it? It makes a huge difference to invite it. Wow. Oh, love relationships. Go ahead, go. Okay. Um, I, I started to talk about chores and, and I think in many, many couples, the division of labor is unequal. So the good question to ask as a couple is, do you feel we equally split our chores? Or do you feel like you're overburdened with them? To have a partner even ask that question is astounding. Oh my goodness. I've been resenting this for so long and I never knew that I could say, let's make it different. Let's make it better for both of us. Mm -hmm. um, if you both have jobs and you have children, that's a, that's a warning sign that one of you is going to feel overworked, if not both of you. And there must be a way to spell each other off so you have some quiet time. I read a story recently about a man who, who was an um, Air Force pilot. Yeah. And in his first marriage, before his wife died, she would seize him as soon as he came in the door and begin to rattle about all the things that happened that day that were difficult for her. And he hadn't had a chance to catch his breath. Yeah. He was already rattled when he walked in the door oh. because of the kind of job he had. And in his second marriage, his wife treated him entirely differently. And it was a real aha for him to realize why he was happy. He was happy because when he came home, instead of being greeted at the door with a list of na 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 oh, I'm so glad you're here. Why don't you go take a shower or a bath and relax? And then we'll put dinner together to you, together. Aww. And oh, what a way, what a way to be greeted. It gave him a half an hour reprieve. It gave him time to relax. By the time he had relaxed, he was eager to do the dinner with her and they, to enjoy the conversation afterwards. And then she could talk about whatever she needed to talk about. And he'd be glad to listen. So Aww. there's a huge difference you can make just in how you treat one another when you walk in the door. Oh, it does set the tone for the day, doesn't it? Same oh. with my kids. I don't have anyone that comes to my house. I live alone. So it's like me and my kids. But if I if they get off the bus and I'm like, hey, how was school? It's always good. But if I'm upset about something that, why did you didn't leave your dishes at the table this morning? Why did you, you know, oh, it does rattle them. You're, the word is rattle. I like that word. It does. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it does change the tone. So we have to I'm be mindful of that. Inside, you know, that's terrific. Yeah, we have to be mindful of our own behaviors and how that affects others. Yeah. And if I had a bad day at work, I can't take that out on them. Some people do, right? You have right. a bad day in general. And okay. Wow. Interesting. Wow. Um, it is different when you are a single parent, mm -hmm. uh, and you're not talking about a relationship with your partner, mm -hmm. you're talking about a relationship with kids, kids yep. and kids can be annoying. Mm -hmm. Um, they can be non-compliant. They can be, um, uh, weepy, mm -hmm. and, uh, they can demand attention when you yep. at least have the energy for it. And yep. um, being able to say, not now, give me a half an hour and I'll be glad to listen, but I can't add it to everything that's already on my plate. Let me get in the door and begin to deal with the day here. And then we'll talk about what happened to you today. Aww. You know, a child can wait. They can wait. Yeah. If they're asked to wait. But if they're not asked to wait, they'll bombard you. Mommy, 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 mommy. Yeah. Um, I think I think another issue that happens among couples is the difficulty of asking for what you want. And and this is true in dating relationships too. Um if if you don't think your partner wants to give 
to you, then you may begin to hide your needs. And the longer they go unmet, the more strain it has on the relationship. Mm -hmm. So um, whether it's asking for sex or it's asking for time or it's asking for time away, these are all issues that people are afraid to say, I need that too. Um, most of us enter relationships with friends and family that are already important to us. And sometimes it's really helpful it's to invite our partners to yeah. meet them and get to know them and engage with them. And sometimes it's good to have time alone with them yeah. because that's what you're used to. And it's not saying that the relationship isn't deserving. It's saying that both are deserving. Mm -hmm. So those are some, some other things that we can do. Um, I like to discuss how we make decisions as a couple. I think there are certain decisions that are individual. Mm -hmm. where, where I work may be my individual decision, but whether I work a 20 hour yeah. week or a 30 hour week or a 90 hour week yeah. is a mutual issue. And so to have a, a method for what, what will we decide together and what will we decide as autonomous individuals? Um, you can't tell me what job I will like. You can tell me when you think I'm unhappy in my job. Mm -hmm. You can tell me that when you think I need to okay. talk about my job. But my job, although it's our livelihood, part of our livelihood, my job has to do with who I am as a person. And yeah. it's really significant. And usually when you enter a relationship, those things are already established. But I find, especially with uh, those who are under 30 and still not in a, in a committed relationship, that there is a lot of dissonance between yeah. what each thinks they should give to the relationship versus what they should have individually. And it's learning to give up some things that makes a relationship work, not just mm -hmm. taking on things. That's true. Now, what happens, hold on, when you have two people in a relationship and you really have different wants and you're not respecting each other's wants and needs, what happens? I mean, you have to give a little on both ends of it but what if you're just adamant about it like I've had I'm thinking of my friends and how they fight and what happens with them but it's like there has to be compromise no or yes or, and you know I think I think being in a relationship is the hardest job of all I do I don't think it's easy and I think people have romantic ideas about what a relationship yeah. would be like but in truth they don't know how to do it and it's being willing to acknowledge that you're having mm -hmm. air difficulty that will help you decide how to fix it. Now, for the couple where they don't listen to each other or they each take but don't give, mm -hmm. problem. Yeah. And if they're able to say what's what's the matter, if they're able to not identify it, then they can set up a time to say, okay, let's just talk about what other ways we could do this. So that you don't feel deprived and I don't feel deprived. Mm -hmm. So that you don't feel used and I don't feel used. And mm -hmm. making decisions like that, oh, they, it makes such a huge difference. Yeah. Because, because you have the satisfaction out of, of coming up with a compromise that allows for each of you to get something. And I think that's that's the goal. Uh, if one of you is a winner, and the other is the loser, you're both losers. If That's so true. both of you are winners because you've given to each other what the other needs and you've done it in a way that was helpful and supportive, then you're both winners and you'll feel positive about the relationship. So I think one of the things to do, uh, which is where I began, mm -hmm. is to actually do an assessment. Uh, in this little book, there is a questionnaire which you fill out separately but then you share the results and you look to see where there's overlap of areas of difficulty. Mm -hmm. And then you can decide they have exercises in this book for each of those areas. 
So you can do them or you can take it to a therapist and you can say, you know, this is what we think is going wrong in our life. And we want, we want to find a way to fight differently, uh, to not beat each other up to not call each other names, Mm -hmm. to uh, not use power over each other. And we don't know how. And that's your agenda. You've already established exactly why you're there. And you'll use the time to work on those issues. Mm. Beautiful. Great conversation today, Miss Bonnie Ring. Well, thank you. I I got up early. I decided that this is what I wanted to talk about. And I did some thinking about it. Well, I I really do think relationships can be the most wonderful part of your life, but they can also be the most difficult. Yeah. And it's better to own when they're difficult and try to fix them. All right. Well, thank you so much, Bonnie. Wow. Uh, amazing show. Again, congratulations on being here um, as our Woman of the Year. And could you share again how we could reach you if we do have questions? Oh, my phone number is 650-560-560. 8590. And my email address is dr as in Dr. Bonnie Ring, B-O-N-N-I-E-R-I-N-G at Comcast.net. And I'd be happy to hear, hear from you and answer any concerns that you would like to share. Beautiful. Thank you so much. Stay tuned. We will be right back with more. Don't go anywhere. Thanks so much. Bye. Are you looking for even more of the podcasts and hosts that you love? The Podcast Business News Network is proud to announce that you now have even more ways to listen live. Check out the MyTuner Radio, Online Radio Box, and Simple Radio apps on iOS and Android, or find us online. Search for Business News Network on MyTuner-Radio.com, or search Podcast Business News Network on Streama.com and OnlineRadioBox.com slash US. Take your podcasts on the go and don't miss a minute of the action. Broadcasting from the business capital of the world, this is the Podcast Business News Network. For nearly 2,000 severely injured veterans, everyday life has become filled with barriers. Day-to-day simple tasks can become pretty daunting. I have to carry my chair up two flights of steps or have somebody do it for me. What scares me the most is just the falling. When I'm struggling with my house, I think, you know, to have that one great barrier just knocked down, I mean, it's... It's crucial. Home for Our Troops is a wonderful nonprofit that builds a mortgage free, fully adaptive, handicap accessible house, and there's no catch. It'll be our very first home that we've ever owned. This is a game changer. This is where your life begins again. We need you to join us in completing this important mission. Please visit HFOTUSA.org and help build homes and rebuild lives. Because of you, everything's. It's going to be okay.